I'm Rob Mintz, I'm the Chief Curator here at the Asian Art Museum, and it's my pleasure to welcome you today. Um, before we begin our program, I just want to say the Asian Art Museum sits on the unceded lands of the Ramaytush Ohlone peoples, who were the indigenous inhabitants of the San Francisco Peninsula. We respect the elders and those who descend from them and who continue to be the inhabitants of this land. Today we have a very special program for you. As you know, and I hope all of you already have, today is the opening of our Heart of Zen exhibition. Um, if you haven't yet, when this lecture is completed, go downstairs, go into the Osher Gallery. It is your once in a lifetime opportunity to see this amazing painting. Um, join us three weeks from now, on December 9th and 10th, when you will be able to see the other work that will be coming here to San Francisco for the final three weeks of the year, the chestnuts. So, without further ado, um, I would like to introduce to you the Barbara Bass Baker, director and CEO of the Asian Art Museum, Dr. J. Xu. Thank you, Rob. Good afternoon. And um, um, I'm so very excited but in the spirit of uh, the heart of uh, Zen, embodied by this immaculate, one-of-a-kind painting, Six Persimmon, I have to be very excited in a very quiet way. <laughs> and um, it's just beyond the words and, uh, that I command to express how I feel at this very moment. But today, I'd like to, first of all, welcome Warm welcome to all of you. I'm so proud that we are host to this once in a lifetime opportunity and the exhibition, The Heart of Zen. And uh, normally we say, I say, I'm proud, there are always good reasons, but this time there are even extraordinary reasons because I'm happy to share with you the very first visitor to this exhibition was none other than Dr. Joe Biden, the first lady of the United States of America yesterday. And this morning, our speaker emerita, Nancy Pelosi, and her husband, Paul Pelosi, came with many elected officials of the United States Congress and then had opportunity avail themselves of the opportunity to see the exhibition as well. And I think the message of peace, compassion, reflection, and the cross-cultural understanding is very much in the same spirit as the APEC conference that they came to attend. So, seeing the persimmons and later the chestnut paintings outside of Japan for the first time in more than 400 years would not have been possible without the partnership and friendship of Albert Kobori Geppo of Ryo Koyin of Daitokuji Temple in Kyoto. And His Excellency Albert Kobori will come to visit us in December. So please, hold that day. Also essential to this project have been our friends at the Kyoto National Museum, an institution with which we enjoy an important partnership to cl collaborations on projects like this. I'm very grateful and honored many years ago to sign a letter of the sister organizations between our museum and the Kyoto National Museum. And what a wonderful fruition of that partnership it has been to present to you all the heart of Zen. I'm deeply grateful to the leadership of the Kyoto National Museum. Today with us is the deputy director, Mr. Kitakaze, and four his team's robust efforts to make sure 
that our collaboration with Kyoto National Museum, with the Ryoko Yin Temple, are successful, are fruitful. And of course, the fruit is right here with us. I'm deeply grateful to Melissa Rennie, who has been instrumental from the very beginning when we first had the spark of an idea. When Melissa is with us today also. And she has been on the staff of the Kyoto National Museum for many years. But I'm proud to say that we also claim her as a member of the Asian Art Museum family for many years. Thank you so very much, Melissa. And I'd like to, yes, a round of applause for her. <laughs> Actually, I remember very keenly in 2017, Melissa took me to meet, for the first time in my life, Abbott Kobori to discuss this project. And I remember distinctly in his office, Abbott Kobori kindly gifted us books of his teachings in the history of the temple. I also noticed there was a painting, looks very familiar to me, on the wall of his office. And that painting, of course, was the six persimmons. I was very excited, I was so thrilled, and, uh, but being the most humorous ever that I have ever met, he actually said, Director Xu, this is a facsimile. You may see the real one in your museum. <laughs> that has come true. That has come true because not only the effort of our colleagues in the Kyoto National Museum and of course, Abbott Kobori and his staff, but also because the heroic effort of the staff of the Asian Art Museum, particularly our Japanese art curator, Dr. Laura Allen and Dr. Yuki Morishima. Is Laura us? And uh, Yuki somewhere, please stand, please stand. <laughs> Thank you so very much. Actually, Laura gave our First Lady a wonderful tour yesterday of the exhibition. And our First Lady was so inspired, she said she would arrange six persimmon as part of her Thanksgiving decoration in the White House this year. I think this is quite a feat. I'm extremely excited in a quiet way to hear the lecture today. It is an honor to have uh, Ms. Morihashi, an expert in the study of Chinese paintings from the Kyoto National Museum, to speak to all of us today. I love lectures, but this is a one of the few lectures that I will hold on to every word of it. <coughs> Last but not least, let me thank Esko Kubota, a long-time docent and volunteer at our museum for being our translator today. And also I see Cassie Young, who our docent who gave the talk, Tuesday Takeaway. I'm inspired by her personal insights that uh, encourage us to approach the painting in our very own each and individual way to transport our state of mind to the world that portrayed that many years ago, but still very much living and relevant today. So without further ado, let me invite Deputy Director Koichi Kitakaze to say a few words. Kitakaze-san, onegaishimasu. Yeah. Hello. My name is Kitakaze, uh, the deputy director of the Kyoto National Museum. Uh, first and foremost, I want to extend my congratulations on the opening of the Health of Zen exhibition. You may not know this, but these paintings 
persimmons and chestnuts attributed to Muchi air treasures that had never been publicly displayed even within Japan until a few years ago, 2019. Since being brought from China, they have been housed in Ryokou in a sub-temple of Daitokuji, for the past approximately 400 years. There, what might be called a hidden treasure. And more amazingly, this marks the first time these significant paintings have ever been exhibited outside of Japan. These paintings are nationally designed to important cultural property. For that reason, the Kyoto National Museum has been actively supporting the export and exhibition of this artwork here at the Asian Art Museum. The teachings of Zen are very difficult to understand, and they are said not to be comprehensible through words alone. Paintings such as persimmons and chestnuts might be a means to aid and deepen understanding of these teachings. However, simply gazing at such an artwork doesn't immediately facilitate an understanding of them. In order to cast light on various aspects of persimmons and chestnuts, Ms. Mori, Morihashi Natsumi, the curator of in charge of Chinese paintings at our museum, will present today's lecture. I hope that she will provide some valuable insights to enhance your appreciation of this artwork and contribute to a better understanding of Zen art. Thank you. So it's now my pleasure to introduce to you um, Ms. Morihashi, Morihashi-san. Um, she is, as you just heard, the Associate Curator for Chinese Painting at the Kyoto National Museum. And from 2014 until 2021, she served as the curator in charge of Chinese paintings at the Osaka City Museum of Fine Arts. She completed her doctoral coursework in art history at Kyushu University and uh, in recent years has been working on her own research that has focused on themes including Taoist and Buddhist paintings from the Song and Yuan dynasties and the eight eccentrics of Yangzhou from the Qing dynasty. Her topic today is Chinese painter, the Chinese painter Mu Qi in Japanese culture. Morihashi-san. Nice to meet you all. Sorry, I speak Japanese or Kyoto Kokuritsu Hakubutsukan Morihashi Natsumi to Moshimas. Konotabiwa, Asia Bijutsukan, Naganen Kaekakushikita, Heart of Zen, no Tenankai no Kaimakubini, Kosa no Kikayo, Itadaka Kotoga de Kitai Henko and Yomotarimas. Mata, Raiget, Junigat Nichu, Ichinichikara, Kaimaksur, Asia Bijutsukan to Kyoto Kokuritsu Hakubutsukan, the Kyo Sai Ten. Japanese taste in Chinese ceramics に先駆け、今日の講座を通して、日本と中国の文化のつながりの深さをご紹介できればと思っております。Hello, I am Natsumi Morihashi from the Kyoto National Museum. It is a pleasure and honor to be here at the opening of the Asia Art Museum's much anticipated exhibition, The Heart of Zen. This museum and the Kyoto National Museum is also working on a show called Japanese Tastes in Chinese Ceramics, 
scheduled to open December 21st. With these exhibits in mind, I would like to discuss today the deep cultural connections that exist between Japan and China. 今回の講座のテーマは中国南宋時代の前奏であり画家でもあった木桂についてのお話です。ハート・オブ・ゼンはこの画家の作品「書き図とクリズ」に焦点を絞った、えー、大変意欲的な展覧会ですが、えー、この2服の掛け軸だけではなく日本には13世紀以降数多くの木桂の作品がもたらされ現在でも大切に伝えられています。We will discuss Mu Xi, a Chinese Zen monk and painter who was active during the Southern Song Dynasty. The Heart of Zen is an ambitious exhibit that features two works by this artist his paintings of six persimmons and chestnuts. But there are also quite a few other works by Mu Xi that have been brought to Japan from the 13th century onward, cherished, and passed down to this day. さてまず日本に伝来している代表的な木桂の絵画についてご紹介します我々日本人がまず思い浮かべるのは国宝に指定されている観音円覚図です三幅で構成されているこの絵画は中央が白,白絵をまとった観音右は子供を抱える手長猿左は天に向かって鳴く鶴によって構成されていますいずれも中国の北宋時代以降の絵画の伝統形式をする姿で表されており、木桂の画技がいかに卓越していたか、私たちは容易に知ることができます。Let's take a look at some of some quintessential paintings by Mu Xi that have been made it to Japan. One that immediately comes to a Japanese mind may be Guanyin, Gibbons, and Crane. This is a triptych that has been designated as a natural, national treasure. It consists of three hanging scrolls a white robed guanin at the center, a mother gibbon and infant on the right, and a crane squawking towards the heavens on the left. Each scroll is of a style indicative of、uh, northern, post northern Song Dynasty tradition. And a testament to Mushi's mastery of the brush. 注目していただきたいのはこの三幅がいずれも共通する水墨の表現です鶴の額に用いられた朱色を除けばこの絵画は水墨のみで表現されています観音を取り巻く薄い墨は瞑想にふさわしい洞窟の薄暗さと足元の水面から立ち上る水蒸気の存在を暗示しています墨の濃淡や慎重な筆遣いによって微妙な光や大気の変化を表現することは木桂の水墨画家としての一流の技術を証明しています。Noteworthy is the ink expression shared among the three scrolls. With the exception of a hint of vermilion on the crane's forehead, the triptych is rendered entirely in ink. The misty ink that shrouds Guanyin. Suggests the dim obscurity of the cave appropriate for meditation, with vapor rising from water below. The subtle changes in light and atmosphere expressed through ink tones and meticulous brush strokes attest to Mushi's、uh, virtuosity as an ink painter. Mokke no Tsuju Sha wa Nihon ni ook sonzai s h i m a s その表現に最も接近し偉大な成果を上げた画家は長谷川東博です東博は木桂の観音円覚図を学習しその図像を屏風の中で再構成した作品が知られていますこちらは東京井出光美術館が所蔵する実覚図屏風です Many Japanese artists have attempted to paint like Mushi but one that comes, came close to his artistry with great success was 長谷川東博 We know Tohaku studied Mushi's Guanyin, Gibbons, and Crane before reimagining it for his own work on a folding screen. Here, we see Tohaku's Bamboo and Crane now in the collection of the Idemitsu Museum of Art in Tokyo. Tsuru no bubun o kakdai shite mi ruto, Tohaku ga mokke no saru to sokkuri ni egai te iru koto ga wakarimasu. Sara ni, chikurin no kukan hyogen ni mo mokke gae no shikou ga ukagaimasu. If we zoom in on the crane, 
we can see the close resemblance to Mushi's work. The spatial expression of the bamboo forest also indicates a penchant for Mushi's paintings. これは近年最も人気のある国宝として日本人の人々に認知されている作品ですがその園芸に木計が達成した水墨表現が存在することは明らかです。The most, the most famous outcome of Tohaku's study of Mushi is his pine forest folding screen. This work is one of Japan's most popular national treasures in recent years, and we can trace a clear lineage of its ink expressions to Mushi. さらに長谷川東博には猿の図に習った作品も残されています。この京都の寺院の障壁画として制作された古木園構図は現在に服の掛け口として仕立て直されています。そのうちの一服を見ると大きな木の幹の上で。枝を片手につかみながらもう一方の手を肩に乗せた子供に添えている手長猿の姿が描かれています猿たちが乗る古木を表す奔放な筆遣いは明らかに木系の猿図を意識するものですただし東博の猿の絵は陽気な表情を見
諸区すなわち四川省の出身で南東の都が置かれた林安すなわち浙江省広州に出てきて修行しました当時の宮廷から支援を受けて最も重要な寺院となっていた金山万寿寺の武順師範の弟子となり後に聖古古藩の陸通寺を創建したと言われています Now that we've reviewed the impact of Mushi's paintings on Japanese painters, let's discuss the artist himself. Mushi was a Zen monk painter active in the late Southern Song Dynasty. While best known as Mushi,、uh, he was also known by his Buddhist Dharma name, Fajan. Originally from Shu, present day Sichuan province, he came to study Buz- Buddhism in Linnan. Present day Hangzhou, where, which was then the Southern Song capital. We are told he became a disciple of Wu Jun Shifan or of Janshan Wanshu Temple. This was an important temple that came under the patronage of the imperial court. Mushi himself would later establish the Liu Tong Su Temple on the shores of West Lake. この地図は南宋時代の西湖周辺を表したもので右が北下が東側です西湖のすぐそばに法王山という山がありそのふもとに南宋の宮廷と首都が置かれていました西湖を挟んで対岸には木計の開いた陸通寺の文字が見えます他にも左隅には武順,武順師範のいた金山またそのやや上側には東西に分かれた天目山が見えますこの天目山が天目と呼ばれる茶碗の呼び名との由来となった山です南宋の都が置かれた聖湖周辺には日本人の留学生がしばしば訪れており中国から文物を持ち帰るときにその地にちなんだ呼び名を日本に伝えました This is a map of West Lake and its surrounding areas during the Southern Song Dynasty The north is oriented to the right here and the east to the bottom. The Southern Song Imperial Court and capital lay at the foot of Fenghuang Mountain near West Lake. On the opposite shore sits Liu Tong Temple, the temple Mushi established. In the corner to the right, we see Mount Jingshan, where Wu Xun Shifan was. Above it, The east and west peaks of Mount Tianmu, from which the Tenmoku tea bowls receive their name. Japanese monks studying abroad often visited the areas surrounding West Lake and the Southern Song capital and would re- return home with cultural artifacts carrying names of the region. This is the most important thing about the Mokke and the Shio, the Bujun Shiban. この図像は日本の留学僧エンニが求めたもので武順自身の散文が情報に書かれていますこの画像は1238年の年季を持つ基準作であるだけでなく中国の肖像画の作例の中でも非常に古く高い写実性を有する貴重なものです日本では国宝に指定されています This is a portrait of Wu Jun Shifan who was Mushi's master This image Was obtained by Japanese monk Enni, who studied in China. Wu Jun himself inked a tribute along the top. Not only is this an important work dated to 1238, it is also valued as a very early example of a highly realistic Chinese portrait painting. It is designated as a national treasure in Japan. この肖像画を持ち帰った日本僧の縁には、木系と同じく武順師範について禅を学んだことから、兄弟弟子にあたります。これが日本人が木系をしたい、身近に感じる大きな理由の一つです。木系自身は日本に来ていませんが、鎌倉時代に来日した五反船や宇垣草原など、武順の弟子である中国人僧は日本に招かれて将軍に徴用され、大きなお寺を与えられて禅を伝えています。彼ら武順の弟子たちの活躍を通して、木系の絵画が日本にもたらされ、愛好されるようになったと考えられています。エンニ、the Japanese monk who brought this portrait back with him, studied Zen with Wu Jun Shifan as did Mu Chi. 
So the two are considered brother disciples. This is another reason why the Japanese particularly love and connect with Mushi. Although Mushi himself did not come to Japan, his Chinese disciples, such as Wuan Puning and Wu Shue Zuyuan, were invited by the shogun during the Kamakura period. They were given important posts and large temples where they spread the teachings of Zen. Scholars believe that Mushi's paintings were introduced to Japan through such activities of Wu Zhu Shifan's disciples. これは鎌倉演楽寺の作品が伝えられたことがわかる最も古い記録は仏日庵古物墨録と言います。これは鎌倉演楽寺の達中仏日庵の重物のリストとして元王2年に制作され作成され上智2年に典型のために現物と照ら
皇帝である紀宗や李光林李安中両海といった宮廷画家4人が上がり将軍家にとって皇帝や宮廷の絵師が最重要視されていたことが分かります続く上長ランクには木系や死の武順師範を含む画家11人が挙げられています宮廷画家が中心の中この評価は非常に高いものと言えます実際に将軍家が所有していたコレクションの目録五物御恵目録には中国絵画90点が載っていますがそのうちの3分の1以上が木系の作品ですいかに木系が特別視されていたのかが分かります Over 170 painters mainly from the Song and Yuan dynasties were appraised in this manual and categorized into upper, mid-level and lower ranks Four painters of the court, namely Emperor Hoizong, Li Gongling, Li Anzhong, and Liang Kai, are listed at the top as triple upper rank artists. This shows how the shogun valued the works of the emperor and his court. Eleven painters, including Mu Shi and his master Wu Jun Shifan, follow as double, double upper rank artists. This is a very high rating for non court painters like Mu Shi and his ma- Zen master. In fact, the shogun's collection included 90 Chinese paintings, of which more than a third was painted by Mu Shi. We see how much Mu Shi was appreciated here. Sanya を描けばあっっっさりとししたたももののでで高価なな鑑賞に耐えるものではないせいぜい寺院などで静かな暮らしを少し助ける程度だとか荒っぽく質が悪く伝統を踏まえていないなどなかなかに厳しい評価を与えていますこの評価は中国の文人たちが与えたもので彼らにとって木系の絵画は正統的なものには見えなかったようです In China, things were a bit different. Mushi's works received relatively harsh criticism, such as what we see here. The mountains and fields painted by Mushi are simple and not something that can be appreciated in an elegant way. At best, they help people lead a quiet life in temples, or of rough and poor quality, ignoring tradition. Such e v a l u a t i o n were provided by the literati class. Who may have seen Mushi's paintings as unorthodox. 現時代の終わりごろに成立した詳細バイフではより詳しい木系についての記録を見ることができます木系は好んで流行遠隔緊張山水樹石人物を描いた色をつけることはなくサトウキビの絞りカスやわら筆を使って筆に任せて墨を転じていたと言いますずいぶん素法なイメージがしますしかし続けて簡潔でまとえており余計な装飾はせず松竹梅蘭はなどは形にとらわれずカロには高雅な趣があったと言いますから木系の水墨画による表現は一定評価されていたようですただし日本の場合とは違って中国では時代が経つにつれて木系のことはほとんど忘れられていきました In a painting manual called Sonjai Meipu,、uh, com- compiled in the late Yuan dynasty, we find a more detailed account of Mushi. Mushi likes to paint dragons and tigers, gibbons and cranes, birds, landscapes, trees and rocks, and figures. He doesn't use colors in his paintings. When he paints, He often uses sugarcane fiber or straw bushes, and he takes advantage of the characteristics of such brushes of, of, with, ink, with the ink. His paintings are clear and simple and not decorative. His pine, bamboo, plum, orchid, and rock paintings closely resemble their subjects, and his lotus and reed paintings are of high minded taste. So it seems that. Mushi's paint ink expression was, a, was appreciated in China as well to a certain degree. But unlike in Japan, he became mostly forgotten over time. 
木系の絵画についてもう少し見てみましょうまず山水の事例として少々八景を描いた絵画ですこの二幅の山水画は園児晩鐘と園舗規範の場面を表しています少々八景とは中国の湖南省の後半に流れる少将と小江とその支流の小水の流域にある景観を題材とした山水の絵画で閉鎖落岩遠歩規範三子青蘭高天墓説道帝秋月少々八う園児晩鐘予尊石章の八つからなります創始者は北宋の画家宗敵と言われています Let's take a closer look at Mushi's paintings His eight views of Xiao and Xiang rivers are a good example of his landscape paintings. Here are two scrolls from this series Evening Bell from a Mist Shrouded Temple and Returning Sails Off a Distant Shore. The eight views of the Xiao and Xiang rivers contemplate the scenery along the Xiang River and its tributaries in present day Hunan Province. The eight Views consist of those listed here wild geese descending to the sandbars, returning sails off a distant shore, star- storm clearing over a temple in the mountain, river and sky in evening snow, autumn moon over Lake Donting, night rain on the Xiaoxiang, evening bell from a shra- mist shrouded temple, fishing village in the evening glow. It is believed that this tradition started with Northern Song Dynasty painter Song Di. Song Di is a Jugakshan, Shu Tong, and a Sage Kano Shibako, Sosok, and a Dodo Jidai, and a Katsya Kushita Shitai Fude, and a Konomi, and a Sansui Gao Tokui to Shite Imashita. On a Jigoro Nikita Shinkats, and a Muke Hisdan, and a Song Di Gao Tokui to Shite Ita, Sansui Gao Tokui to Shite Ita, Sansui Gao Tokui to Shite Ita, Sondi was a scholar painter active around the time of the Confucian scholar Jordan, Jordan, Zhou Danyi and politicians Su Ma Guang and Su Shi. He enjoyed painting and was particularly skilled in depicting landscapes. Shen Kuo, another contemporary, wrote in his Dream Pool essays an anecdote about Sondi's eight view paintings. ある時絵が得意な陳陽子という人がいて宗敵は彼の描いた山水を見て「君の絵は上手だが天守が少ない」と言いました陳陽子はその言葉に頭を下げて「いつも私が古の人に及ばない」と悩んでいましたが「まさにあなたがおっしゃる通りです」と答えました宗敵は「天守を得ることは難しいことではない」「君はまず崩れた土塀を探し」Once there was a person named Chen Jongshi, skilled in painting. Song Di looked at the landscape he painted and said, Your painting skills are excellent, but there is a lack of sublime allure. Chen Yongji bowed his head in response and said, I have always been troubled by my inability to reach the level of the ancient masters, and what you say is indeed true. Song Di replied, Obtaining this sublime allure is not difficult. First, you should find a crumbling earthen wall, stretch white silk over a frame, lean it against the wall, and gaze upon it morning and night. キヌを隔てて見えた崩れ土塀の中に見える高く平たく曲がり折れたものが皆山水をかたどるようになる心と目を凝らしてじっくり見ると高いものは山となり低いものは水となりくぼみは谷となり欠けたところは谷水となる明るいところは近景に暗いところは円形になる心を澄ませればたちまち人や動物草木の躍動して行き交う姿が現れてくるこれをしっかりと目で捉え心のままに筆を走らせ、黙って精神のかなうところに描いてゆけば、自然とみんな天の働きに従い、人意でなせるものではなくなると言いました。これを聞いて以降、陳陽子の画角は日に日に進歩しました。
After you gaze through the silk for some time, the crumbled earthen wall will begin to resemble a landscape, appearing tall, broad, or bent, mimicking mountains and waters. Concentrating both mind and vision, the taller portions become mountains, lower ones become waters. Hollows transform into valleys and breaks turn into ravines. Bright areas represent the foreground, while darker ones symbolize distant views. With a clear mind, suddenly the lively movements of people, birds, and vegetation will manifest themselves. Grasp this firmly with your eyes, allowing the brush to move at will, and silently depict the aspects suitable within your mind. Eventually, your work will naturally follow the workings of heaven, becoming something beyond human creation, Song Vi said. After hearing this, Chen Yongji's painting style improved day by day. この話に出てくる天守というのはとても大切な概念で中国の絵画を見る上で大きなヒントになります描こうとする対象をしっかりと観察することは確かに重要ですが形を見せることばかりにこだわると本質を捉えることができないと考えられていました肝心なところは自然の大きな働きに己の精神をうまく緩和することさらに宗敵の逸話の面白いところは実際の山水系ではなく絹越しに見る崩れた土塀のシルエットという抽象的なイメージから具体的な景観を導き出すところにあります。This idea of sublime allure、um, is an important one.It can be of great help when viewing Chinese paintings.Painters certainly need to observe what they paint, but they also need to go beyond copying the shape.One aims to resonate with the grand workings of nature. Song Di's anecdote is interesting in that he speaks of abstract landscapes imagined from a crumbling wall viewed through the sheet of silk rather than a study of actual landscapes. So, the episode of 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 the e p i s o Let's go back to one of Mushi's eight views of the Xiao and Xiang rivers, the one titled Returning Sails Off a Distant Shore. いずれも簡潔な筆致ながら水墨を効果的に用いて光や大気の変化を描いており雄大な江南の水景を眼前に見るかのようです木計は宗敵より200年ほど後の画家ですが宗敵が指摘した天守に通じる表現がここにあるように思われます We sense heavy wind from the lake towards the shore Two boats speed full sail Back on land, trees sway, and peeking among them a house and people along the shore, perhaps in anticipation of the boats. The brush strokes are concise, and yet the ink effectively captures the movement of light and atmosphere, transporting us to the majestic waterscape of Jannan. Two hundred years after Song Di, Mushi's work, Ink Expressions, Uh, connect us to, the, to his sublime allure. さてこの少々八景の掛け軸は他の木計作品と同様に日本で格別に高い評価を受けましたこの絵画もまた日本に百歳された後将軍である足利義満のコレクションに加わりました義満の手元には少々八景を描いた画家が大小の2種類あったといい座敷に飾るためにこの場面これを場面ごとに切断しそれぞれ八服一セットの掛け服に改装されたと考えられていますこの縁地万象と縁歩規範図は大きな少々八景図の画館から切り出されたものと考えられています各服の本紙左下隅には足利義満が用いた収蔵,収蔵していたことを示す彼の印象が押されています
these scrolls received high praise in Japan, just like other works by Mushi. Brought to Japan, they were added to the collection of the Ashikaga Shogun, of, of Ashikaga Shogun Yoshimitsu. Yoshi, Yoshimitsu apparently owned two scrolls of the eight views of Xiao and Xiang rivers, one large and one small. Both were sliced and remounted onto eight hanging scrolls for display in a tatami room. These two works, Evening Bell from a Mist Shrouded Temple and Returning Sails Off a Distant Shore, were taken from the larger size scroll of the series. Seals of Ashikaga Yoshimitsu on each painting's painting speak of their provenance. 現在掛け軸でありますがかつて巻物であったという痕跡は作品自体からも確認できます京都国立博物館の所蔵する「遠方規範図」は数年前に修理を行う過程で私たちはその痕跡を確認しましたなおこの作品は長らく大きな横折れが画面の上に生じて鑑賞の妨げになっていましたが今は本来の美しい画面を取り戻しています Though now in hanging scroll form, Evidence that these works were once sections of hand scrolls was confirmed during a conservation project of returning sails off a distant shore conducted at the Kyoto National Museum. In the past, this scroll was difficult to fully appreciate due to horizontal creases upon the painting, but the work has now been beautifully restored to its original state. この掛け軸の表層に用いられて,られている木れは非常に豪華な金蘭が使われており古くから絵画とともに鑑賞の対象となっています日本の掛け軸の表層はもともと僧侶の袈裟のために輸入された金蘭を仏画などの称号のために用いたことにより発展しました次第に仏画だけではなく中国から輸入した貴重な絵画の表層にも金蘭が用いられ所蔵者の美意識がそこに投影されるようになりましたそのため修理に際しては取り替えることなく補修して再使用を行いました修理のために掛け軸を解体すると虫によって開けられた縦の方向に虫によって開けられた穴が縦の方向に続いていることが分かりましたこれは巻いて保管されている間に虫の被害に遭ったことを示すもので掛け軸の形状を考えればごく自然な縦方向に穴が続いています The mounting of the scroll is of luxurious gold brocade, long admired alongside the painting itself. Japanese scroll mountings evolved from the practice of illuminating Buddhist paintings with gold brocade, originally imported for monks' robes. This practice was gradually extended to the decoration of valued secular paintings from China. And provided opportunities for the owner to express his own aesthetic taste. For this reason, we did not replace the textiles but repaired and restored the original. When the painting was removed from the mount, we found some insect damage running vertically along the scroll. It made sense that the holes ran vertically. Since the damage must have occurred in storage when the hanging scroll was rolled up. しかし解体修理を進めていくと絵画自体には横向きに続く虫食いの穴が続いていることも分かりましたこれは絵がかつて掛け軸ではなく巻物であったことを客観的に示すものです However, we also found insect holes on the painting itself which ran horizontally. Proof that this painting was once rolled and stored as a hand scroll is、um, not as a hanging scroll can be seen here. Mokke no sakhin to kanga erare te kita sakhin de Makimo no kara kake jiku ni shita te nao sareta sakhin wa hoka ni mo arimas. Kono rakubu seizu wa min kara Ashikaga Yoshimitsu ni okurare ta to tsuta e rare mo no de. 日本の権力者の手に渡り明治時代になって天皇へ献上された作品です
簡略ながら野菜の了解や色やつやを想像させる的確な表現は今畑から抜いてきたようなみずみずしさを捉えています。There are other works thought to be the work of Mushi, remade from scrolls into hanging scrolls. This painting of radish and greens, said to have been a Ming gift to, the Ashikaga, to Ashikaga Yoshimitsu and passed through the hands of other rulers, presented to the emperor in the Meiji period. Although simple, the precision of execution successfully conveys the mass and colors of the vegetables and a freshness as if they had just been pulled from the ground. それぞれの服には「序案日翼」と「客来一味」という漢字4文字が加えられておりこれは日本で書き加えられたと考えられていますこの一文は質素な生活の中で野菜に乱され客が来てもごちそうを用意するのではなくこの生誕な味わいを一緒に楽しもうといった禅の精神性に通じる意味があると考えられています各服の上部には1 0ンチ程度の白い星がありこれは本来関数であった紙を切断して、掛け物に改装するときに調整したものと考えられています。Four characters can be seen on each painting, which are thought to have been added in Japan, assisting life in a humble abode with daily sustenance, even if guests come, the same simple tastes. These phrases connect the paintings to the Zen idea of a simple life. Where one might share the pure taste of vegetables with a visiting guest instead of an elaborate feast. A supplemental sheet of paper about 10 centimeters wide is added to the top of each painting. This was probably an adjustment made at, as, a, as the hand scroll was cut and remounted as hanging scrolls. Kake Jiku e no Kai Sou no Mokteki wa Kan Shou no Tame no Benki to Kangai Rale t e i m a s 先ほど少々八景図はそれぞれの場面が描かれた八福の掛け句へとを一部屋に掛け並べたといい将軍が特別な客をもてなす時に鑑賞できるようなフォーマットとして仕立て直されましたこの羅福部製図ももてなしの場の道具として今のような形に直されたと考えられています。This remounting was for ease of viewing. We know that the previously mentioned eight views of Xiao and Xiang rivers were all hung together in a large room when the shogun entertained special guests. The radish and greens paintings, painting was also probably remounted for use in a hospitality setting. 室町時代が終わると、足利将軍家の手元にあった木計をはじめとする中国絵画は、地方の権力者や茶人の手元に移っていきます。1996年に東京で行われた木計を主題とする展覧会は、現在でも参照される画期的な内容でしたが、ここで木計の絵画がいかに日本で鑑賞されていたのかが整理されています。多くの中国絵画がそうであったように、木系の絵画も権力者の邸宅や新,新たな鑑賞の場として、茶の湯の世界に用いられるようになりました。茶会では、床の間にかける掛け軸が重要視され、当初は特に中国の絵画が好まれました。As the Muromach period came to a close, Chinese paintings owned by the Ashikaga shogunate family, including those by Mushi, Were dispersed among regional re- rulers and tea masters. The groundbreaking 1996 Mushi exhibition in Tokyo explained how his paintings were viewed and appreciated in Japan. You see a catalog, cat- catalog of this here. Like many other Chinese paintings, Mushi's works came to be appreciated in the tea room beyond the mansions of,、uh, mansions of power figures. In tea gatherings, hanging scrolls in the alcoves were given prom- prominence, and initially Chinese paintings were favored. 着色の絵画では、宋時代の宮廷画家の絵が特に尊ばれ、その中でも北宋の紀宗皇帝の花鳥画は格別な評価を受けました。この鴨の絵に落観はありませんが、紀宗の筆になると伝承され、画研の細やかで美しい様子。筆致の精密さ、毛づくろいをする鴨の精筆さ
表具の美しさなど多くの茶人たちが絶賛しました画家の鋭い観察眼によって羽毛を作ろう鴨の一瞬の表情が捉えられています画風の点から南宋中期の宮廷画家の作と考えられています Among polychrome paintings, court painters of the Song Dynasty were held in high esteem, especially the flower and bird paintings of Emperor Hoizong. This painting of a waterfowl is attributed to him, though there is no artist's seal. The work has been admired by many tea masters for its delicate silk ground, precision of brush strokes, the serenity of the preening bird. Beauty of the scroll mounting, and so forth. The painter's keen eye observes and captures the fleeting expression of the waterfowl as it grooms its feather, feathers. Based on the style, it is considered to be the work of a mid southern song court painter. More than that, in the case of the book, the book of 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 the book. 断線形の画面に描かれているのは一枝のジャスミンです温暖な気候で開花し甘く優美な香りを放つために好まれましたホンズは白い花がつぼみから開花までの姿をそれぞれ見せ葉はうごめくように翻り生き生きとした表情をたたえています伝承筆者の作長所は北総の新総長に活躍した画家で主に輪郭線を引かない木骨法を用いて花や果実の摂取を描き対象の姿だけでなく、精神性までも捉えたと言います。長所の神筆と認められるものは現在伝わっていませんが、日本では南宋引退画のなどの写実性に優れた花鳥画や装虫術を。長所の作品として伝えていることが多く、本図もその一つです。another prized polychrome painting is one of a flower attributed to zhao chang a northern song court painter。Depicted on the fan shaped ground is a branch of jasmine, a southern flower admired for its sweet and elegant scent. In this painting, the white flowers are portrayed in various stages of bloom, and the leaves twist and turn, adding vigor and life. Zhao Chang was active during the rule of Zhenzhong, third emperor of the Song Dynasty. He was known for his boneless method of painting, that is, painting without the use of outlines, and his ability to depict not only the appearance but also the spirit of his fruits and flowers. While we know of no verified work by this artist that survives to this day, many Southern Song painters of flowers, paintings of flowers, birds, and insects of ex exceptional realism. Have been attributed to Zhao Chang in Japan, this being one of them. 一方、水墨の絵画では、先ほどご紹介した木系のラフクブセイズが、16から17世紀頃の茶会期にしばしば登場します。この図用は室町以降の後半にルフしたことが抱えるため、本作以外の別本が存在したと想定する研究者もいます。As for monochromatic ink paintings. Mushi's radish and greens appears often in tea gathering records from the 16th to 17th centuries. The motif appears widely after the Muromachi period, causing some scholars to suggest that there may have been other editions of this work. また、京都の大徳寺に伝わるこの木系の腐葉図も茶掛けの名品として長く愛されてきました。細かい描写にこだわらず、自由な運筆とともに水を含ん、多く含んだ墨を多用して、牧色豊かに変化させる表現は、禅やわび茶の精神性にかなうものであったと思われます。本図には大茶人として有名な千の利休の書状が付属しており、その中で利休は本図を一段と見事と称えています。Mushi's cotton roses, owned by Daitokuji Temple in Kyoto, has also been admired as a tea scroll masterpiece. With watery ink and free brush strokes, Mushi generates a rich variety of tones without dwelling upon the details. The style was in keeping with the spirit of Zen Buddhism and Wabi tea. This painting is accompanied by a letter from the famed tea master Sen Norikyu. 
in which he praises the work to be one of outstanding quality. この種の素法で自由な政策は水墨表現が発展した当初は文人的精神性を託されたバイチク梅竹蘭菊などが主流でしたが木系の頃からさまざまな花や果物野菜などにより非均な対象とする書き雑画の主題に発展しました。In early ink paintings, wild and free brushwork of this type were mostly of plums, bamboo, Orchids and chrysanthemums, subject matter associated with literati ideals. From around Mushi's time, painters begin to paint miscellaneous images of flowers, fruits, and vegetables that are more, more common and familiar to all. Mokke no Suibok Hyogen no Nakade, Hitokiwa Wareware no Ni in Shogoka Kizamare Kakejiku ga, Kono Kaki Kriz des. この2服は江戸時代に活躍した前奏、光月草岩が実家である堺の天王寺屋から京都の両行院に伝えたと言われています。光月草岩の祖父、父、兄は皆有名な茶人であり、彼らが行った茶会の記録、天王寺屋会期には、木系の柿図、栗図の名前が記録されています。Of Mushi's ink paintings, his persimmon and chestnut scrolls are particularly memorable. We understand that Zen monk Kogetsu Sogan, who was active in the early Edo period, brought these scrolls to Ryoko in Kyoto from his birth home, Tennojiya of Sakai. Kogetsu Sogan's grandfather, father, and older brother were all famous tea masters, and Mushi's paintings of persimmons and chestnuts are recorded in the Tennojiya record of tea gatherings. 両行員にこの2服が伝えられて以降もこの絵画は非常によく知ら一般に非常によく知られていました模倣もいくつか存在したようですまた1800年に刊行された修古十種には相図とともに大徳寺両行員の名物として本図が記載されていますなお現在はありませんがこの書物に,は書物によればかつて本図に大茶人の千の利休の手紙が付属していたと記載されていますここから、柿図、栗図は江戸時代から、禅と茶に深く結びついてイメージが流布されていたことがわかります。欧米圏では特に日本の学者である久松新一の紹介によって、この作品が禅を代表する絵画として認識されているように思われます。Even after these paintings were brought to r y u k o i n Temple, they remained well known. Copies seems, seem to have existed as well. In a catalog of antiques published in 1800 called Shuko Jushu, these scrolls are listed as famous works owned by Daitokuji Ryukoin along with illustrations. Although no, ex, no longer extant, the catalog mentions a letter from tea master、uh, Sen no Rikyu also accompanying these works. This shows, up, shows how these paintings. Were made known to the public since the Edo period with deep connections to both Zen and tea. In the West, these works seem to have come to represent Zen Buddhist paintings, especially after Japanese Zen scholar Hisamatsu Shinichi wrote about them. リズは潤いのある単木で大きな形を捉え鋭い濃木線で伊賀の尖った針や葉脈を表し栗の質感をうまく捉えています4つの伊賀のうち左上の1つはひび割れたような溝があり栗の実が熟して今にも割れそうな様子を描いているようです一筆で簡単に払ったような木線は今倒ってきたかのような枝のみずみずしさをたたえています Let's take a look at each work. In chestnuts, the artist first approximates the burrs with moist washes of light ink. He then adds sharp, dark lines for the spines and tufts, successfully capturing the textures. Of the four burrs, the one on the upper left has a groove that looks like a crack, indicating a state of ripeness. Where the shiny nuts are about to spill out. A line, 
seemingly executed with a single brush stroke, expresses the freshness of the branch as if it was just broken off. まだ売れていない青い柿、赤く売れた柿、完熟となったより赤い柿を描き分けているようです。なお、右から2番目の柿は髪が傷んだため表情がやや崩れてしまっています。この完結で表情豊かな柿たちを眺めると、まるで生命
に提唱したわび茶が流星して特に大徳寺派の禅と融合していく中で高僧の墨跡が尊ばれるようになると中国の絵画は茶がけの主役の座を譲ることとなりましたこれは利休による秘伝書と伝えられてきた南方録に掛け軸ほどの大掛け物ほど第一の道具はなし客定衆ともに茶の湯三昧の一心徳のものなり墨跡を第一とすると述べられていることからも伺えます。As the popularity of tea gathering spread in the Edo period, rare and precious Chinese paintings were no longer the only hanging scrolls displayed in the tea room. Over time, Chinese style paintings by Japanese artists, Japanese style paintings, calligraphy, and old writings came to be displayed. As Murata Shuko's Wabi Tea became popular and incorporated the Daitokuji Temple's ideas of Zen, calligraphy of eminent monks came to be valued, outclassing Chinese paintings in the tea room. In the first chapter of the book called Namporoku, a purported collection of Rikyu's secret teachings, we see the following statement The hanging scroll is most important in the tea room. It helps guest and host come together in the spirit of tea. A first choice is calligraphy. 明治以降の近代日本では、江戸時代までの価値観から脱却し、西洋美術史的方法論を用いながら、新たな、そして正しい美術史を再構築することが目指されました。この中で、木系の再評価も積極的に進められていきます。木系の絵画は古くから由緒伝来が尊重されて名品としての認識が継続される一方近代的学問の判断を受けて文化財として国民共有という性格も帯び,なが帯びるようになりました木系の絵画の中でも特に優れていると再認識されたものは国評や重要文化財の指定を受け日本文化の代弁者として評価を受けています。In modern Japan after the Meiji period, there was a trend to break away from prior values and to reconstruct a new and so called correct artist, art history of Western approaches. This provided the backdrop for a reevaluation of Mushi and his works. While Mushi's paintings continue to be appreciated as masterpieces of extensive lineage, They have also come to be accepted as cultural assets of the nation. Some of Mushi's paintings, re recognized for their exceptional quality, have been designated as national treasures or important cultural properties and are now valued as agents of Japanese culture. Finally, we will be able to see the art of 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 the art. これまで木系の絵画がいかに日本文化と深く結びついてきたかをお話ししてきましたサンフランシスコの地で日本人の私が木系について語ることはどういった意味があるのでしょうか武順師範は禅の教えを求めて海を渡ってきた弟子の縁に対して帰国の際にこの言葉を送っています大宗国と日本国天に果てなく地に極みなしすなわち自身のいる宗国の国と縁にが帰る日本はいずれも果てしなく広がる同じ天のもとにあり、どこまでも続く同じ地の上にあると、この言葉は、禅は心が伝えるものであって、距離や隔たりなどは関係ないことを示していると思われます。私たちが求める気持ちがあれば、禅も木系も国境など関係なく受け入れられるものだと信じています。Lastly, I would like Mushi's master, Wu Jun Shifan, to take stage again. So far, I've discussed how Mushi's paintings connect to Japanese culture. What then does it mean for someone like me, a Japanese, to discuss Mushi here in San Francisco? Wu Jun Shifan gave the following parting words to Enni, his disciple who had come to him, crossing the ocean in search of Zen, Zen teachings, and who was now ready to return to Japan. In great song and great Japan, the sky knows no bounds, the earth no limits. A single statement can have countless interpretations. 
Who can distinguish what is right and wrong? These words seem to indicate how Zen is conveyed through the mind and that distance and separation mean nothing. It is my belief that so long as we seek both Zen and Mushi can be embraced anywhere by anybody, regardless of our national borders and affiliations. Thank you very much for joining me Thank today. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.